The movie begins around the 1400s, in the medieval era of Bohemia, where when Cecilus IV succeeded his father, Roman Emperor Charles IV, as King of Bohemia. Still, the turmoil across Europe complicated his ascension as the new emperor. As war, plague, and famine rose, the Catholic Church fell into disarray, which worsened after two popes, one in Rome and one in France, were elected. To restore order and regain wealth in the kingdom, when Cecilus IV must be crowned by the Roman Pope, much to the consternation of the French papal opposition, which is willing to do anything to thwart the coronation. One of those closest to the king, Lord Borsch, has become aware of the situation as he travels in a carriage en route to the castle. As he gets attacked by an army of soldiers, he gets rescued by a small band of ruthless mercenaries led by the future leader of the Hussite army, the troubled knight, Jan Tsitska. After the fight, Lord Borsch complains to the group about their delayed assault, though he is forced to pay them more than agreed. The bloodied Jan turns his attention to the last remaining assassin, Mick, who discloses their mission was authorized by Henry III of Rosenberg, the country's most influential and controlling nobleman. His honesty helps spare his life, as Jan enlists him in the group. In Prague, Henry seeks an audience with King Wenceslas IV and his scheming half-brother, King Sigismund, feigning concern about the upcoming coronation. Lord Borsch storms onto the throne, presenting a document that will allow the king safe passage to Rome, much to Henry's disappointment, as he wanted him killed in the ambush. He leaves abruptly with his fiancée Catherine, severing his support for the kingdom due to King Sigismund's presence. Later, the mercenaries meet with Torek, Jan's mentor, as he instructs his army of soldiers to perform capital punishment for King Sigismund. Their cruel actions around town are witnessed by Catherine and Henry, with the former protesting at the soldiers and the latter promising to seek counsel with her father to end the injustice. Meanwhile, a hesitant Jan is tasked by Lord Borsch to kidnap Catherine to coerce Rosenberg to keep his word about assisting the king in his coronation. He also reveals that she is the niece of the King of France. While mulling over the mission, he visits his peasant brother, Yaroslav, who is scrounging in the forest with his son. As the brothers reunite after a while, Jan is taken to his brother's lodge, where he reminisces about the old days. He gives his nephew a boar tusk pendant and rewards Yaroslav with a share of the bounty to help support his livelihood. The following morning, he and the mercenaries sneak inside the church, kidnapping Catherine in the prayer room, which alerts Captain Martin and his guardsmen to hunt her down. Though unwilling, she is forced to join the group, leading her to discover the secret murders Henry has been doing all over the kingdom behind her back. While hiding her in the caves, Lord Borsch informs the king of their plan to keep her inside hunting castle. Later in the evening, Jan takes Catherine's prized ring as he accommodates her needs despite her apprehension. The following day, Henry confronts King Sigismund about his fiancée's abduction, which he admits was plotted by King Wenceslas IV. He offers to rescue Catherine and return her to the nobleman in exchange for the nobleman's union support to make him emperor. He sends Torek to infiltrate Yaroslav's camp in Trutnev to prove his word. Yaroslav watches as the night guard teaches his son how to use a slingshot, only to get incapacitated as bandits abduct the residents. Jan is soon alerted to the chaos, rushing to town and discovering the horrific mess after the bandits raid. He becomes distraught upon seeing his nephew spiked onto a wooden pole, consoling him before administering a final stab in the waist as an act of mercy. One of the rebels, Barbara, tells him that Yaroslav will be executed if Catherine is not returned to Henry as soon as possible. After burying his nephew in the woods, he gathers the remaining rebels at night to ask for assistance fighting against King Sigismund's forces while keeping Catherine safe. Barbara looks after her as the pair discuss the tyrannical actions of Henry towards the common folk. Unable to accept becoming a pawn in the rebels' plan, Catherine flees, only for Jan to recover her in the woods while she protests that he underestimates King Sigismund's power. With the plan set up, Jan, his mercenaries, and the rebels prepare as they meet with Torek and his guardsmen for the exchange, despite getting outnumbered. Jan reluctantly faces his former mentor, who throws back his nephew's boar tusk pendant to spite him. Catherine speaks out defiantly against King Sigismund, despite her being surrendered to Torek's army for Yaroslav. After the tense standoff, a remorseful Jan gets berated by his brother for his nephew's death. Though his group seemingly retreats from the scene, their caravan blocks the crossroad, preventing Torek's guardsmen from passing as the mercenaries throw smoking hay bales. As Torek's men retaliate, Jan and the mercenaries take advantage of the smoke-filled area to incapacitate them while they hold out inside the cart. Unbeknownst to Torek, two mercenaries brutally kill the royal escorts to save Catherine. Later, after the attacks subside, the group retreats inside a cave before Captain Martin reports to Torek that they succumb to a trap. Not long after Jan consoles a dying Mick, they get ambushed by the king's guards, forcing Jeralov and the group to splinter off into different sections of the cave. 
The knight gets scarred in the left eye as he and Catherine escape by diving underwater before Torek can catch up with them. Though barely escaping from danger, Jan's wound worsens, forcing Catherine to use maggots to clean the infection while he slips into an unconscious state, dreaming about a young girl in his youth, Anna. Catherine later hears him say her name, though he remains silent when asked. Though Jan is nursed back to health, he discourages Catherine from leaving their spot until they can ensure that Torek and his men have left the area. Meanwhile, Henry complains to King Sigismund about the failed recovery mission, only to be subdued by Torek, as the devious king threatens to kill his fiancée if he breaks their agreement. Torek is then instructed to search for Jan, raiding small camps to elicit information on his whereabouts. Eventually, Catherine is captured by the bandits. However, she is seen by two young men, who alert a vengeful Jan and help track her down. Without hesitation, he slides down the forest floor. He brutally beheads one of her captors before the remaining guards flee in terror. He hangs the severed head on a tree as a warning for Torek and his men to see. Angered by this sight, he promptly orders the men to pillage the area, burning everything in sight and sexually assaulting all the townswomen. Later, one of the mercenaries, Conrad, visits him and reveals information about Catherine in exchange for a hefty sum of money. Not long after, Jan and Catherine arrive in the crow-infested area, only to find no one alive amid the smoldering ruins left by the bandits. With no other recourse, they sleep in one of the barns at night, allowing Jan to reveal Anna has long been dead, though her memory lingers in his mind. Meanwhile, Henry is furious with the incompetence of Captain Martin and his men, as they have failed to capture the pair, who are days away from reaching out to King Wenceslas IV. While they immediately set out during a stormy night to restart the search, Jan has nightmares about Anna's death, with his father preventing him from saving her. Upon awakening in the morning, he and Catherine see Henry and his horsemen outside the shed, preparing to sweep the area for them. As she promises to buy him time to escape, Jan reveals that Henry is the mastermind in the plot to kill Lord Borsch. Later, Catherine reunites with him in the swamp, declaring she will no longer be a puppet of the royals. Elsewhere, Lord Borsch arrives at Hunting Castle as King Wenceslas IV practices his archery. He reveals his brother's treachery about working with Henry to rescue Catherine. Knowing it would deter his coronation, the king accepts defeat. Still, Lord Borsch convinces him to hold on and pray for the success of Jan and the mercenaries in returning her to the kingdom. Later, after Jan and Catherine walk across the river, they encounter a harrowing scene below where Captain Martin and his raiding party are preparing to hang the local boy, David, who helped Jen. Unwilling to accept his cruel fate, Catherine rushes downhill to stop the execution, demanding the guards set the boy free. Her outburst causes Jan to be consumed by bloodthirsty rage as he hacks and slashes the guardsmen. Unfortunately, he gets overpowered quickly and is captured by Captain Martin, while David is returned to his family. While the villagers revolt, Catherine stabs the distracted captain in the back, causing everyone to retaliate. Torek, who had heard about their capture, arrived at the scene moments later but found they had escaped. Conrad is then assassinated by one of the mercenaries. After reuniting with his brother, Jan consoles a distraught Catherine as she washes away the blood of Captain Martin. Later, the rebels, inspired after seeing Catherine kill the captain, rally to help take her to King Wenceslas IV. Still, Jan considers bringing her to her father in France, hopeful he will be convinced to thwart Henry's forces. Meanwhile, after Lord Borsch confronts an unfazed King Sigismund about the plot, he and King Wenceslas make a deal with Henry to reinforce Catherine's recovery in exchange for his support for the Rome trip and lowering the people's taxes. Later at night, Jan tells Catherine that Anna was executed by the King's knights for killing a pig, feeling guilty for following his father's orders instead of saving her. Hearing his story moves her to tears and compels her to kiss him after developing feelings. Unfortunately, the mercenaries, unwilling to ally with France, incapacitate him and kidnap Catherine. The following day, King Sigismund, with Henry's help, fulfills the usurpation of his brother's throne, killing his guards and declaring his authority over him. Elsewhere, David rescues a beaten Jan from bondage and takes him to see Lord Borsch, who is attacked. Before dying, the regretful Lord warns him about King Sigismund. He pleads with him to rescue Catherine to prevent the kingdom from falling. Jan then inspires his brother and the rebels to fight with him as they prepare to sneak into Hunting Castle. Meanwhile, Torek's men ambush the mercenaries in the castle courtyard, forcing the survivors to take Catherine to the dungeon. Chaos ensues as Jan and his rebels appear and let the lion loose from its cage while they escape with Catherine. The fight continues outside as Torek and his men scuffle with the rebels, leading to many casualties. Yaroslav is thrown off the ledge while Jan faces off against an enraged Torek in view of King Sigismund and Henry. As Jan gets pinned down, Catherine jumps into the river to drown herself, forcing the two knights to brawl underwater while they try to rescue her. After Jan kills Torek, 
he takes her ashore, and kisses her before she gives him her mother's ring and dies. Later, the rebels take her body and sing a religious chant to honor her sacrifice. Though King Sigismund ascended the throne after his brother's death, the people revolted against him. Jan led thousands of peasants in crusades, leading to the Hussite Wars. The movie ends as he leads his Hussite army against waves of enemy battalions while keeping Catherine's ring, leaving his mark as one of the greatest military commanders ever. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.